Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is resonance in open end air columns. And we want to know how do you draw the standing wave patterns for the various harmonics of an open end air column and how are the wavelengths and frequencies of these harmonics related. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Before we discuss resonating air columns, let's review the physics of vibrating strings in order to draw some parallels between these two types of vibrating media. When I discuss resonance in strings, I mentioned that at just the right frequencies, the string can vibrate with a standing wave pattern. Reflections of waves off of one of the fixed ends will interfere constructively and destructively with waves that approach that fixed end in such a manner as to produce a pattern of nodes in anti Antinodes that are always located at the same locations. The frequencies that cause this type of standing wave pattern are known as harmonic frequencies. These three animations display the vibrational pattern of the lowest three frequency harmonics of a vibrating string. We refer to them as the first harmonic, the second harmonic, and the third harmonic of the string. One thing that you'll notice in each of the patterns is that there is a node located at both ends of the string. There's nodes there because the string is fixed in place at its ends and unable to vibrate up and down, thus forming a node, a point of node displacement. The fundamental frequency, or first harmonic, is the lowest possible frequency which, with which the string can naturally vibrate at. The frequency of the other harmonics are higher than the fundamental frequency. The fundamental frequency is also the longest wavelength which, with, with which the string can vibrate. Vibrate. The wavelengths of the other harmonics are proportionally smaller than the wavelength of the fundamental frequency. An open end air column is a column of air enclosed within a cylindrical tube that is open to the surroundings at both ends. If you blow over the top of the tube or into the tube, you can force particles of air within the air column to begin vibrating with one of its natural frequencies or harmonics. A standing wave pattern would be formed. At the open ends of the tube, air is vibrating wildly in and out of the tube, forming an antinode as shown here in the diagram. And in between every antinode is a nodal position where air remains undisturbed. This particular diagram represents the vibrational pattern for the first harmonic or fundamental frequencies. Other harmonics or frequencies would exist, and in each case there would be additional nodes and antinodes located between the ends of the air column. Since we'll be talking a lot about the vibrational patterns of particles, we need a better way of representing it than using busy diagrams showing particle movement at various locations within the air column. And so we resort to what's called a displacement plot, in which we show the displacement of particles along the air column at various locations relative to the so-called rest position represented here by the dashed line through the center of the air column. In this diagram, we represent the left end of the tube is having a large positive displacement. At the right end of the tube, there's a large negative displacement. And in the exact middle, there's no displacement whatsoever. If we were to draw the displacement plot one half cycle later, we would draw something that looks like this, in which we show a large negative displacement on the left end of the air column, a large positive displacement on the right end of the air column, and no displacement in the exact middle. Here we're representing antinodes and nodes within the air column. Now it's important to emphasize that these are called displacement plots. We're not trying to convey the false notion that sound waves act as transverse waves. Indeed, they do not. They act as longitudinal waves vibrating parallel and anti-parallel to the direction of the wave motion as shown in the top diagram. The previous slide emphasized the vibrational pattern for the first harmonic or fundamental frequency, but there's other natural frequencies or harmonics with which the open end air column can resonate. For the first harmonic pattern, there are two antinodes, one on each of its open ends, 
and a note in the exact center. To create this standing wave pattern for the second harmonic, you have to add an antinode and a node. So there will be three antinodes in all, one on each of the open ends, and an antinode in the exact center of the air column. Since a node is located in between every antinode, there's two nodes in the pattern for the second harmonic. To create the pattern for the third and fourth harmonic, you have to add an additional antinode and node. So for the third harmonic, there's a total of four antinodes and three nodes, and for the fourth harmonic, there's a total of five antinodes and four nodes as shown here in the diagrams. Knowing that this is one full wave and this is one half of a wave, I can inspect the patterns and write algebraic statements in which I relate the length of the air column to the wavelength of the wave. In my algebraic statements, I'm going to represent the wavelength by the Greek letter lambda. So for the first harmonic, I observe one half of a wavelength within the length of the air column and I write L equal 0.5 or one half wavelength. For the second harmonic, I observe one full wavelength. For the third harmonic, 1.5 waves. And for the fourth harmonic, two full waves. So I write these algebraic statements shown here. Now I can take my L equal equations and transform them into lambda equal equations using some algebra. So for the first harmonic, I would divide both sides of the equation by 0.5 and I'd end up with L equal 2 times lambda times L. For the second harmonic, I would have wavelength of the second harmonic is equal to 1 times L. For the third harmonic, wavelength is equal to 2 thirds L. And for the fourth harmonic, wavelength equal to 2 fourths L. Now I've written each of these equations with a fraction in, on the right side. 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, and 2 over 4. So the denominator of the fraction is simply the harmonic number 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the the numerator is always 2. So the general equation is that the wavelength of the nth harmonic, where n is the harmonic number, is 2 divided by n multiplied by L. I can use these equations to calculate wavelengths for the various harmonics if I know the length of the air column. So if I know the air column length is 1.2 meters, I can calculate the wavelengths to be 2.4, 1.2, 0.8, and 0.6 meters. Now not surprisingly, the wavelength of the second harmonic is one half that of the first, the wavelength of the third is one third that of the first, and the wavelength of the fourth harmonic is one fourth that of the first. Now we just saw how there are very clear wavelength relationships between the harmonics of an open-end air column as communicated by these equations. But there are also very clear frequency relationships between the harmonics of an open-end air column, and this is how we configure them out. For the second harmonic, the wavelength is one half the wavelength of the first harmonic. It has half the wavelength, but it would have the same speed value. Since speed is frequency times wavelength, in order for the product for frequency and wavelength to be the same for the second harmonic as it is for the first harmonic, it must have two times the frequency of the first harmonic in order for the product to be the same. So the frequency of the second harmonic is twice that of the first harmonic. We would reason similarly for the third and fourth harmonic. The wavelength of the third harmonic harmonic is one-third that of the first harmonic, so its frequency value must be three times that of the first harmonic. And for the fourth harmonic, its wavelength is one-fourth that of the first harmonic, so its frequency value must be four times that of the first harmonic. In general, we can make the claim that the frequency of the nth harmonic is n times the frequency of the first harmonic, where n is the harmonic number 2, 3, 4, etc. I can use these frequency relationships to predict the frequencies of the various harmonics if I know the frequency of the first harmonic. For instance, if the first harmonic frequency is 250 hertz, then the second, third, and fourth harmonic is two times, three times, and four times bigger than 250 hertz, giving us 500 hertz, 750 hertz, and 1000 hertz. 
Let's summarize the various mathematical patterns and standing wave patterns for open end air columns beginning with these two equations. The wavelength of the nth harmonic, where n is some harmonic number, is equal to 2 divided by n multiplied by the length of the air column. And the frequency of the nth harmonic, where n is the harmonic number, is equal to n multiplied by the frequency of the first harmonic. This table displays the various standing wave patterns for harmonic number 1 through 5. You'll notice in the column marked nodes that the number of nodes is equal to the harmonic number. And in the column marked antinodes, the number of antinodes is equal to the harmonic number plus 1. Here are the equations for computing the wavelength and the frequency. If you know the wavelength of the first harmonic, using the equation up above, you can calculate the wavelengths of all the harmonics by dividing by the harmonic number 2, 3, 4, and 5. For frequency, you don't divide by n. Instead, you multiply by n. So if you know the frequency of the first harmonic, you can find the frequency of all the harmonics by multiplying by 2, 3, 4, and 5, or whatever the harmonic number is. Here are some examples beginning with wavelength, assuming that we have an air column that has a length of 60 centimeters or 0.60 meters. Using the first equation on this slide, we can calculate the wavelength of the first harmonic as 1.20 meters. We can calculate all the other wavelengths by taking this 1.20 meters and dividing by 2, by 3, by 4, and by 5 to get the wavelength shown here in the wavelength column. For frequencies, we have to multiply. So assuming that we have a first harmonic frequency of 280 hertz, we can find all the other harmonic frequencies by multiplying by 2, by 3, by 4, and by 5 to give the values shown here. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a simulation in our interactive section, which you manipulate variables and observe the result. There's a mind zone physics mission and a concept builder that presents questions and gives immediate feedback to your answers. Great practice for you. And finally, there's a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.